Okay, are you ready to? Uh, go on. It's Thursday, 15th of August, 2019. In today's show, we review Blackpool's excellent 3-1 win away at South End last Saturday. The Carabao Cup penalties exit at hands of the Maxfield Sound on Tuesday night. And we look forward to Saturday's home clash with Oxford United with Liam Wakeford from the Oxford podcast, The Fence End. And we also have another special guest in the studio. I'm John Aspinall, and this is the Seasiders podcast, episode 134. Happy shopper, Seasiders and the Mac lads. Seasiders out there, welcome back to the Seasiders Podcast 134. Happy Shopper Seasiders and the Mac Lads. Uh, Nick, uh, Happy Shopper Seasiders there. They tried to take our mantle of the Seasiders, so I thought I'd diss them with that, a diss track. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very, very, that very imaginative. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I got a Tim gave that the nod of approval, didn't you? Well, it went over my head, that did. <laughs> well, do you not know they're called oh, the Seasiders? And do you not hear them singing C, C, Seasiders? No. Do you not hear them singing it? Well, they do. Right. Yeah, they, uh, they nick our chant, basically, so... That's me, Eminem, Dre style diss track there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, Tim, that's Nick, and this is Ashley Knowles. Good evening, Ashley. Great to have you on. Good evening. Thanks for inviting me. Also known as Polton Boss on the forums. Yeah. <laughs> Amongst other things people say about you. Well, yeah. More too, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the past. Yeah. yeah so great to have you on anyway, Ashley. Yeah. So um, we'll kick things off by we, with when we get a new guest. We always have a quick... Uh, tay tar tay with new guests and uh, get their background so uh, we'll kick things off by saying what made you become a Blackpool fan in the first place well I'd like to say it was since I was two years old <laughs> but I'm not going to get away with that one um, my family moved 66 when I was uh, four to Edinburgh and we came back for um, the first home game of the from, from the Edinburgh did you say from Edinburgh yeah How uh, are you Scottish no I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you didn't listen to me, did you? I said, I move, we moved up in 66. You know, that great year when he oh, won the World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Um, and then basically, uh, apparently that year, Blackpool went down from the from the first division. And um, my father had got a, a promotion up to Scotland and got a transfer back down. And um, a bit like a footballer. And, and anyway, basically, my first game was against Birmingham City, 2-0. It was 1969 August. That was in League One, the top division, was it? It was in the second division, Division Two. Okay. And that year, Blackpool ended up going up, and in the summer of sixty of of, of seven uh, of seventy, we moved down. I remember my, my late father saying, "Blackpool went down the year we we moved up to Scotland, which wasn't a good idea anyway, being an England fan." And we moved um, back down to to England, and I saw basically all the Premiership game, uh, all the Premiership Division One games, bar the Arsenal game when we were away, and was with my father as a, a, a nine, ten-year-old lad and uh, was, got myself very lucky. After that, I was addicted to Blackpool. I have watched other teams, as a lot of my mates what? would say. What? Oh, what? what? I said watched other teams. <laughs> but, uh, well, I think, a few people know, I think a few people know that I went to file the, the Fleetwood to get my football fix with... Um, Fleetwood bus, <laughs> Preston bus. <laughs> With but old Timmy Two Scarves <laughs> over there. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think anyone can uh, ever ever take away from me. I'm tangerine through and through and just love the club. And I, and I love the town of Blackpool. I live in Polton now, but I just love the fact that what's going on at the moment and the Simon Sadler, and I'm feeling rather emotional. Yeah, all right, great. Um, actually, obviously, we've only met briefly over the last sort of year or so. It's like we've, sort of, we've all met each other through podcasts and through the, uh, the troubles I've been describing this as. You know, like the, uh, the Northern Ireland style trouble. So I was yeah. trying to explain it to a guy at work, that's how I described it. But actually, I remember seeing you before I knew you. Um, you used to sit in the south, didn't you, above one of the concourse, the, the exits? Correct. Because I was sat in the M block, and I always remember seeing uh, this mad guy like jumping up and down, waving a flag around. I was like, God, he's mad for him. And that was you. You're a very uh, passionate fan, aren't you? <laughs> Pretty much so, yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe we got in the Premiership, and I don't think most of us could, you know. Um, to have got there on that dream, to, to get the seventh playoff place and that night at Forest, like we all talk about, and we'll bring it into again. 
and I never ever thought I'd see that and uh, we all thought it would be the, the start of a real concrete foundation. But now um, we can slip and forget what's happened from there till now because we've got Simon Sadler and I can see this concrete foundation again. So I'm equally as excited, except I'm a bit older now, nearly, what, uh, 10 years older. I don't think I'll be jumping around with a flag, but every now and then I'll get up and give him a cheer. What's, what happened to the flag? Have you still got it? I've still got the Barcelona flag. And uh, Was it a Barcelona flag? It, what it was. I went Pray on, tell. No, what it was, I went on the um, on a tour of the, of the new camp and I saw this big bulldog, and being English, and it looked growly, and it's tangerine, and I thought, yeah, alternative the ultras now, and yeah. I thought that'd look really great on the Blackpool end um, and so I bought it and hardly used it then the premiership came I thought I'll take this <laughs> and um, it sort of like got a little bit of recognition and you know what happens you get a bit of recognition you feel like you've got to play to the gallery and that's what happens it, it is there and I will bring it out at some time but maybe when we're in a big game or a promotion game or something like that but I won't be jumping up and down with it quite as much so I'll let Tim do that <laughs> I've got to say, um, the person I feel sorry for is the person who has the season tickets directly behind Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it should have been sold as restricted. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have any uh, uh, words said to you from the uh, people behind? No, because, well, no, but yes, but no. Away, definitely. Every away game. But at home, I just went at the start of the season and said, look, I promise you, you won't miss a kick. I'll only jump it and start singing when the play stopped, or it's in the midfield, and I sit down, because actually, believe it or not, I do watch the match as well. That's great to see this enthusiasm, though, anyway. Oh, great to be back with it. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't have the enthusiasm, and, and I can't believe I've got it back. It's just amazing. Well, to be honest, we, 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 when we were in Tory Corner having a pint, and Ashley always used to say, I don't think I'll ever get my enthusiasm back like I did. I've too, moved on to other things. It and never I, leaves you, does it? And having seen him at uh, three games now, the two home games and also at South End, um, he's, he's still mad as a box of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> still jumping out of his seat any opportunity <laughs> and still starting off chance. So uh, I think he's got his mojo back. You can't deny what a solicitor says, can you? <laughs> well, you, you never lose it, do you? I mean, a lot of people I always said on the boards... Um, well, you know, a lot of people have moved on and they'll be doing other things now, but it's in the blood, isn't it? You never lose it. It is, and I think it's easy to say it when you don't know what's around the corner and, you know, there was all that uncertainty. And it's easy to say it when you're not going to games and you've got that, you've not got that connection anymore. But like you say, it's, it, it never leaves you. It just kind of, it's in the background. And the moment we knew we were getting Simon Sadler, well, you, just, you saw the reaction at the South End game, didn't you? That it hadn't left anybody. You know, it, it all comes flooding back. Certainly does, Nicholas. Um, right, actually, just two more final questions. What's your most memorable home game, most memorable away game? Um, we tend to try and err away from the, the Wembley games because they're a bit predictable. So it's a bit more interesting if you can give something from your, your, your annals of time of uh, some <laughs> really uh, memorable games and, and why. Well, if you talk about memories, memories are made good and bad, aren't they? And I can remember Blackpool really, really struggling in the first division. Let's do one good, one bad. Right. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. Um, playing Chelsea at home, I've been 3 nil up at half-time. And then by somehow... What, in the league? In the league, in Division 1. And somehow, and we'd, not, we'd hardly won a game all season. We were at the bottom of the league. And at half-time, we thought, well, we've got this one bottomed. <laughs> and we lost 4-3. And in those days, to lose, four, three, to lose 4-3 three from a 3 nil, it was very, very rare. Um, what year was this? Can you remember? Uh, it will, it will probably been just seventy one. I can't remember what it was. The seventy seventy one season. Yeah, that one off season. In yeah, that's one, right. It, yeah, that? but I can't actually remember what time of year it was. Um, I remember it was not a cold day, so it would either been sort of like maybe one side of Christmas. Leave it at that. I can't. Re I can't remember. Three 0 up at half time. Three 0 up at half time, and we lost four three. Yeah. Always um, Bradford esque. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And th I've got to say, there's two Blackpool games really, I suppose. But the the big one is actually the first one that I mentioned when um when I when I saw him play Birmingham City because it just got me tangerine. I had a tangerine scarf, took it up to Scotland, and people thought. Ooh, I don't know, maybe they thought it was sectarian. But it's, oh, yeah, know, there is that. You know my views on sectarianism. I think it's been quite known posted. I have no time for it because we're English. Um, anyway, moving on quickly. Um, I'm a tangerine, stayed tangerine, but certainly that one stuck. And the away game, it's a bit boring, really. But nothing Forest. Could, nothing could touch Forest away that night. The, the fans that were there and the way the team played, and I remember being in the museum pub in, in, in Nottingham with my two lads and said, 
And and and, and my mates TG seventy one who posts and, and saying, we've had a great season. This has been unbelievable. Let's not expect anything. Just let's enjoy it. Let's get behind the lads. And so what happened after that? It's got emotional almost. I can feel it at the moment about Sadler. <laughs> pretty pretty much everyone says that Forest game, don't they? I mean, a lot of people say it surpasses Wembley almost. Without, well, to me, uh, we, as, we as, 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 yeah, as a uh, performance, it was unbelievable. And I was I went with my brother and um, a few other people uh, in a seven seater, if I remember rightly, and um, we uh, a we fielding got it, bus. Yeah, we got in the ground and. Um, pre-match the, the atmosphere from the Forest fans was like something that I've been to a lot of games and it's like something I've never seen or heard because you literally you couldn't even hear what the person next to you was saying it was that Pardon? loud uh, yeah exactly it, it was um, it was um, quite oh, it, it, I, I thought it was going to overpower us pre-match intimidating thought, wasn't yeah, it, it was quite intimidating and uh, we were surrounded on three sides by them and it literally was it was ear shattering the noise that was coming and then for the lads to turn in a performance like they did is... Um, I never tire of watching the goals from that game and seeing the way that all those lot in that corner go absolutely mental every time it's, a goal it's goes on in. It's limbs, on uh, limbs all over the show, isn't it, when that, uh, when that <laughs> goal goes in. I, I think I, I couldn't get a ticket for it, so I watched it at home with three of my mates. And I don't think I've ever made a similar noise as I did that day. I was sort of like screaming like a girl almost when those goals were going in. It was, uh, it was a, Obviously, I wasn't there, but... For a game to watch, it's just. Ugh. I sold my ticket. What? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we never heard this before, Nick? Because I'm not like to talking to about, about it. Go on, pray <laughs> tell. Well, I was the only one of my mates who got a ticket, and it got to the day, and nobody else knew who was going. And I was like, oh, I can try and sort of lift out, and I'm struggling to do that. <laughs> and my mates were going to the pub, Jack. and I was like, I get the train. It's not as much fun when you're on your own, is it? And I thought, no. Did it be fun that night? I know. <laughs> the lad at work was desperate to go with his mates. And I was like, well, I've no one to go with, so I'll sell you my ticket, thinking, probably not going to get anything out of the game. And it was just like, oh. He's got a history of this, hasn't he? Yeah, missing it's goals. It's missing there, is a, there is a pattern, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's move on. Right, okay. Can I, can I make Nick feel better? Go on. Well, this silly sod was working, works in Runcorn, and my mate lives in Chester. And we went to uh, we went to Wrexham when we were three 0 down. And you know, talked about the four three three nil. And this idiot walked out. We heard Blackpool scored one goal as we came out, but I didn't stay. Just listen to the Tony. Was it the Don Tony? Tony was it? So I actually walked out at three 0 on that no, one. So that did. makes you feel better, Nick. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly less riding on it. No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did a neck, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Should, you should make it into the. Uh, I wasn't collecting grounds then, either. <laughs> <laughs> Dunna Smith. Yeah. Dunna Nick Smith. <laughs> Talking about memories, has anybody seen this week um, uh, the video of the old Bluefield Road? Which I, yes. to be honest, I had not uh, seen yeah, at all. Going yeah. back to Ashley's first game, I was thinking about. The cop. The, way the guy walking up the cop steps. It's quite atmospheric, isn't it? And uh, that's how albeit slightly more dilapidated. That's the, how I remember Blackpool when I first went. It had a roof on it in that video, didn't yeah. it? I, I can't remember the cop with the roof on. It I, came I, off in 1980 because I always have a claim to fame that uh, I wasn't playing actually, but I was at the uh, cup final of Hodson against Ansdell in 1980 and they took the roof off the following day. So it was actually the last match with the roof on at Blue Serious? Field. Yeah. That's good, that's End it. of the season it was and uh, and I was stood on the cop uh, watching the match because some of my mates were playing and... Um, and and that and it came off the following day. What was what was the actual rationale behind them? They reckon they reckon there was something to do with the safety certificate, but the the roof ended up being sold for scrap. And um, I mean, it was only it only gone on in eight in sixty one, so it'd only been on sort of what less than twenty years. But he used to get battered, didn't it, by away fans like, trying to knock holes in the roof and things like All that. All I can say, Tim, is it looked fine when I was on it. I spent quite a lot of time on it. It looked yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah. On it? On the roof, you mean, or on the car? Well, I, I got pulled for saying on, for sounding like a knobber. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to have to watch what I say on. I'm saying that the, the roof looked good on top of right. the stanchions. Yeah. And it never looked like to me it was falling down under it, any I mean, circumstances. It, you look at the you look at the old pictures of the cop with the roof on. It's like wow, look at that. It's, yeah. You know, it's quite it's quite impressive, and it, particularly before they segregated it. Um, but yeah, it was. I mean, it's it, it's all that de period of decline that started around. Mm. It was around the time that uh, as Alan Ball was coming in as manager, wasn't it? He came. Billy Cartmel, yeah, yeah, Billy Cartmel's uh, ownership really in that era. Um, it's a very very disappointing because you see that you see. I don't know what year that video was but it looked in very very good condition at that stage so um, it was only up for 20 years yeah well there's, there's actually some pictures on um 
Facebook and whatever show it being put up, and it's actually 1961. Right. It's just before the rail, just before the central station closed. But you're, uh, yeah, it's, it was only because if you ever see the pictures in the 50s, there's no roof on it; it's just a mm. big open end. Don't we ask that? Ask me that question. I wasn't there then. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll debate that one. <laughs> later. Few years on me. <laughs> well, I remember my first ever game was on the cop. Um, I think it was, must have been about fifty p. I remember dad gave me some money, and then, I think it was about seven or eight. And it seemed like a life. It's not like climbing Everest, going up those steps at the back. And I remember when I walked, I was like, "Wow, look at this! It's like being on a mountain almost, and watching a few like tiny figures in the background." Because you're right at the top, you're really quite high up, weren't you? Yeah. It's quite a sad day when that came down. It's never been the same. The ground, I think. I think the ground looked right when it was on, and when once it came off, yeah. it just never, never seemed to be the same again. And you know, we, we remember in the last podcast we were speaking about we actually got to the point where only a quarter of it was That's open, right. wasn't yeah, it, yeah, for yeah, away yeah. fans? Yeah. And mm. yeah, it's, uh, I miss it. I miss it really because mm. it's. Uh, but we're, we're. I know we're going to be speaking about it. But we're at South End on uh, on Saturday, and and that's still very much like an old school ground. And the new stadiums are never quite like that atmospheric. And they're all unique, weren't they? They're all different. They're yeah. all little quirks. Yeah. And Blackpool, for me, was like the ideal ground with a cop end and and paddocks all on Seats four the paddock, sides. Yeah, yeah. So you could stand up wherever you wanted around the ground, whichever view you wanted. So, does anyone have a, ever have dreams about being on Blackpool games? Because I sometimes do, and I'm always on the old ground, but it's not quite as it used to be. Yeah, I know. Do what you know mean. what I mean? Yeah, it's just memories of when you were younger. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Right, anyway, as Tim said, um, South End, that was last Saturday. These two basket cases went to South End, didn't you? Um, Ashley, I believe you drove. Well, no, uh, me and Tim shared the driving. Shared the driving. Took the car down, yeah. Who's, whose car were you in? Mine. You and yours. So you were Tim. I hope you were. It well, was. Well, you better have was. been. <laughs> <laughs> so what time did you set off? Uh, twenty to eight, wasn't it? Twenty to eight. That's not actually that. I thought it'd be yeah, a bit earlier than that. We were taking so it's four on a straight clean run it's four and a half hours so we that's not that bad actually so we, 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 s- we had a stop at Watford Gap for a half an hour and a bit of breakfast about 10 o'clock so we went all the way down to Watford Gap without stopping yeah yeah. and then uh, we were going to stop early weren't we and then we, just kept, we were able to get basically halfway and then we swapped over there and uh, rough, it was roughly halfway point so uh, we did the pretty much the same on the way back although we came up a different way we went up to Leeds and across because of um, slow traffic elsewhere this is fascinating content isn't it <laughs> 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 Which motorways did you go on exactly? Oh, we can leave that one. Out. I think <laughs> I think what I've got to say is that you'd have never got me watching Blackpool, even when we were in the uh, the Premiership. I didn't go to the far away games, but when I watched the team on the opening game um, and the way they played, and I was shocked being on the north, the way that the the five at the back and how organised Grayson had gotten straight away. I had to go f- to the first game under Simon Sadler, Grayson, and the, and the team and. The team were even more emphatic and even even better. And the only thing that's ruined the game was w- w- was husband being sent off. Really, that sort of like levelled it and nearly got them back. But the motivation, I think, more than the route that we took, Tim, is the the reason is that mm. I had to go to that mm. game. I, I didn't want to travel that distance. But when something gets inside you, if you've been a passionate football mm. fan, and I've, I've been accused of being passionate every now and then, don't know why, but um, I had to go last Saturday, and I'm so glad I did. I think um, the fact we've missed so much over the last four and a half years maybe contributes to that. The fact that you know you realise what you've been missing and mm, yeah. the motivation was there to get you there. Well, I listened on the radio, um, Radio Lanx, which I don't know who the commentator was or whether it was his first ever game he commented, but it, it was difficult to listen to because it was so poorly described. Um, was it a southern guy? Was he a southern? I'm not sure. Well, you could hear more of the. Yes. Whoever the, the commentator was in front for South End, like Radio Essex or whatever it was, he was really loud and this guy was really quiet, which made it difficult. But it was just his description of it. Um, like for the third goal, he said, and uh, I'd, I'd had to nip to the door and I came back and he said, so there's, so there's a corner and, and Blackpool haven't dealt with it. Yes, they have dealt with it and it's a goal. So I'm like, <laughs> well, who scored? <laughs> he was like, and it's 3-0. And I was like, well, are you? You don't describe that as a, the attacking team not dealing with a corner, do you? No. It was, it was really hard to listen to because there was no kind of like anticipation in his voice when there was an attack to it. Because you, you have to try and visualise it, don't you, when you're listening to it. Um, and it was really hard to work out what was going on. But, you know, obviously, first half, it was it sounded absolutely amazing. And seeing the goals on telly at night, um, it was just very free-flowing the way they played. And that three yeah, ball... Yeah, 
you know, Kai Kai's through ball for Fonz. It was, uh, you know, for an away performance, like I say, other than the red card, which was just daft, it was it was the perfect away performance. Mm. So, obviously, I didn't listen to the game. Um, I was taking Eddie to see Ang- Angry Birds 2. Uh, and unfortunately, it finished at <laughs> <laughs> 25 past two. So I was on my phone straight away as I got out. I was like, yes, we're teaming up after like 20 minutes. And then I got a text off a mate of mine, and um, apparently I won't I won't name the place, but there's a place that's actually showing all the Blackpool games now via uh, I follow and uh, a VPN. Uh, apparently, you can bypass it and watch the game. Uh, so yeah, I'll tell you with I'll tell you the details afterwards, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so yeah, I watched the as soon as I got to watch the game. Uh, I got there sort of just just in ten minutes into the second half. Um, Husband's done his uh, karate ch- karate kick on the uh, the other guy, and uh, we were under the car for pretty much all of it. So I, I started following it on the radio for 25 minutes in total domination. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll go on to the game now. I know we'll go on to the final details. Um, Blackpool lined up as follows: Anik, Turton, Husband, Till, Edward, Spearing, Thompson, Feeney, Kai Kai, Delfonso, and Grandjolay. Um The first sort of bit of action. I mean, you two probably know more than anyone else. Um, was the was the own goal? Was it? Were Blackpool kind of on top for the first ten minutes, or did this goal come from nowhere? I think. I think my, my recollection of the first few minutes were that we we, were, we seemed we started off very well. We we're on the front foot all the way through. A um, lot of ball. It was very windy, very windy day. Um, although it wasn't quite as bad as it, I think it was projected to be. I thought it was going to really ruin the game because South End's ground's quite enclosed. The weather was a lot nicer what it looked like up here. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah, but I believe so. Mm. It was it was it was so windy. like intermittent it's it's still windy. really yeah, really windy. windy. But yeah. in the ground it it didn't seem to be quite as bad. Um and but I think we had the the wind with us in the first half and they were playing into it, which I think also affected the reason why the second half we were a little bit more back to the wall. Um, but I, I seem to remember we were we were quite we were doing quite well and and then they said this the first goal this cross comes in I can't remember was it, was it a free kick or a corner Thompson I think it was yeah it was Thompson's cross I can't remember now it was a corner or a free kick free kick free, free kick, kick yeah. and uh, he just seemed to it was you know it was a bit of a scramble and it hit the back of a uh, the back of one of their players and, um, and and went in it was a real league one. it was a real lower league goal it wasn't was, it it was it was almost like Sunday league <laughs> never mind lower league <laughs> I would say, though, in all fairness, the way Blackpool came out of the traps, we put so much pressure under them mm. that actually I think we stunned the South End defence, to be honest with you. And I think that, you know, you talk about forced errors in tennis, you talk about forced errors. Someone would have put the ball in the net if they hadn't have had them. That, and it was just a melee, really. And in the end, the ball ended up in the net. And uh, But it's the it was the, the Blackpool pressure and the way they started the game and the shape and the formation and organisation that to me created the goal. And if we do that every home game and away game, then that's fine by me. Cool. Three minutes later, we were 2-0 up. Um, I think I've seen the goal on TV. Obviously, it was in front of the Blackpool fans as well. Um, great through ball from uh, Kai Kai. Sort of put it right into Delfonso's, um, with the way he was running, just perfectly weighted. And uh, as we've said on air before, Delfonso is such a, he is a good footballer, he's a good, good technical footballer. Didn't panic and just... Slotted it in. He also showed a, he showed a remarkable turn of pace as well, mm. I thought, because the ball was played inside the defender and Delfonso went around the outside of him. And whilst it looked like a good pass from where we were, you know, we were almost at ground level and you, you, you're seeing the ball come towards you. When I saw it back on Quest later, I, I didn't realise how, how, good, go- how good a ball it was. Mm. And it really was a proper defence splitting ball. Uh, and like you say, really well finished and, you know, Delfonso was playing really, really well, as as and as indeed is Kai Kai. Third goal, uh, 37 minutes, uh, it was three down for Blackpool. Uh, again, a bit of a, a, a melee. Ashley, can you can you remember this at all? Yeah, it was a bit of a mess, really, wasn't it? Again, uh, but we, we got the foot on it, and we we got the ball in the net, and it. <laughs> can't repeat what I've said. I'm wasting time on the show. It was very, very similar. But if you put the pressure on, mistakes will occur. Mm. I mean, we could have. We had a few shots getting nearer and nearer the goals as well. Um, it was a great save by their it, keeper as well. Yeah, wasn't absolutely, it? Yeah. from Nangelo. Mm. Yeah. Um, I saw the I saw the build up to that uh, to that almost goal, and it was a uh, it was really good one yeah, touched yeah. off, wasn't it? Great football. Um, the, on the radio, I was just listening to it on the way back from the cinema, and um, the commentator was saying, "You might have heard this, isn't it? that it was a an unbelievable save by the goalie." It was, yeah. He said it was world class because um, a few people said, "Oh, he should have scored," but it was a it was an excellent save. And they were saying on the radio that and. I think the co-commentator was a Southern guy, so I don't know if he was Southend or or who he was, but 
um, he was saying how impressed he was with Blackpool to come away from home and and you know a few of the Southampton fans were getting a bit frustrated because as you would do when you go 3-0 down at home when you're expected to be on the front foot. But we just didn't allow them to play by the sound of it. It was it was our attacking that just got them pinned back. And it was only, like I say, in the second half with the red card when, when they started to come back into it. I mean, what were your guy, what, you two guys, what was the what your view of the, the husband tackle? Obviously, it was in front of the Blackpool fans. Um, one thing that made me laugh was after the, <laughs> after the tackle got put in on the footage, you can see some guy with his son, he's coming down the steps. And he gives it a nice little round of applause. <laughs> I think there's. What did it look like in the flash? Well, to be honest, when it, when it first happened, I thought it was it was reckless, but I actually thought he won the ball. That was my immediate reaction. Well, the linesman gave a throw in, didn't he? He didn't. He didn't give it. He, he, he didn't give a foul. He was right on top of it. But he, when you actually see it back a few times, uh, originally it looks like um, husband's going to stand off him because he almost like ambles up to him and then. He slipped, the, didn't he? The well, the the, 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 um, the the pitch is actually a little bit like Blackpool's used to be in the uh, old days. Yeah. It's quite raised up, and it looks like the ball almost slips a little bit down um, uh, the, slope. The, the slope. And all of a sudden, the player is not in control of it, and that's when husband. I love this. There, there must have been a bit of nigg- <laughs> There must have been some niggling I, going on yeah. beforehand. I think there must have been something, some sort of a beef between the pair. But it seemed to me to like Simon Cox really made. It because um, even the player on the floor wasn't didn't seem to be badly injured particularly. It was, it was a heavy challenge, but all of a sudden Cox is in there giving it plenty, and all of a sudden then the, then the player on the floor starts rolling around and staying on the floor as if he's you know dead. Um, he got up and carried on playing, and um, you know w- uh, was Cox the player who kind of sprinted over to husband and then kind of just yeah, slowed so down and just stood yeah. in front of him, yeah. yeah, and started going in his face and, and making a big thing of it. And I'm not sure it got I'm not sure it got sent off, but for Cox's intervention, but you still say three 0 up away from home. He's in a corner. He isn't going anywhere. Mm. What, why create that risk? And it did. You know, I'm not. One, they got one back. And if my concern was if they that got was another Cox back as well, wasn't it the goal? Yeah. He's and, it, and if they got another one back, all of a sudden the last ten or fifteen minutes, you're really under pressure. And you know, we had, we have we had Annie coming to pull off a fantastic save as it was um, in order to keep you know to keep it two goal lead. So yeah, um, I think it's a combat. The second half was a combination of the elements in their favour and and losing husband. And you know, we're going to miss him. Um, I think we missed him as we're going to yeah, last we night, and we're going to miss him Saturday and and Rochdale as well. So, I mean, Ash, what was your views of it? What did you? Well, think? I mean, I'm not I'm not going to stand on the side of the righteous, but for me, Simon Grayson, I really was dead dead, sort of like respectful of his comments on the on the radio. I, it, it, it was rash. Um, when I saw it, a bit like Tim, when I saw it, I thought, it's only a book in that. I said that to Tim. Did you really? It. Well, yeah, on TV, yeah. I thought, straight red, straight yeah, red. Well, yeah, but when I saw the replay, I thought, what was I watching? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're behind the goal. Um, no, it was it was a, it, it was a red card. I, I actually, though, I'm going to give husband the benefit of the doubt is everybody wants to play for Blackpool at the moment. Blackpool's tangerine, Blackpool are back. And your enthusiasm is bound to get the better of you. He's a great player. And when he comes back, he'll be better, but a bit calmer. Maybe he doesn't fancy playing for Blackpool. That's why he did it. He wanted a bit of time off. <laughs> Couldn't just, everybody wants to play for Blackpool now, pal. <laughs> everybody wants to play for Blackpool. For Blackpool Football Club. The Football Club. Blackpool Football Club. <laughs> Moving on quick. I'm just trying to think how I could segue more of these like uh, comedy snippets in. Ashley, you're very famous for doing that. Uh, or the Oi Oyster uh, doppelganger. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Remove that man. <laughs> Two years old. <laughs> Do you mind? Well, I think we just really need to move away, <laughs> not just from <laughs> who Owe Oyster may have been trying to um, impersonate, but I think Owe Oyster as well. I think we ought to kill him off. And I think we oh, need to get back. No. I think we need to get no. back to Barcelona no. flags, tangerine winning. <laughs> the club's back. It's going strength to strength, and that's the way it's going to go. And it's never, ever going to look back ever again. Right, okay, are we? Anyway, sorry, Tim, go on. What do you mean? <laughs> I was going to say that uh, Owe Oyster was actually, as I recall rightly, was uh, was born out of a trip to Germany. We were in a bar in, I think it was in Cologne, and he started <laughs> doing that impression, and we just giggled all the way through the evening. So uh, uh, It is we, a great impression. We've we had, we had, we had, we had some fun with it over the years. <laughs> well, I, when I was two years old, my family moved from the northeast. <laughs> To a guest house <laughs> in South in Blackpool. What road was it? 
Wellington Point. Road. Number 22, Wellington Road. And how old were you when you uh, came? Two years old. Two years old. And at that time, I never thought I'd end up owning a football club, but I did. A football club. Blackpool football club. Right, you've had your entertainment value. That's it. Let's get back on to Blackpool. You know, and let's get on to Simon Sadler. I've even got my um, six-year-old son saying it. He says it now. I showed him the video and he goes, Blackpool, Blackpool Football Club. It's really funny. I'll have to get him on that. Come on, Simon Sadler. Let's right, talk well, about him. We'll move on to um, Macclesfield, shall we? Uh, this was uh, Tuesday night, two nights ago. Um, we were all in hospitality upgrades, weren't we? Uh, yeah, ten we're walls, posh. Actually, yeah, posh. Ten quid. <laughs> Do you know, it was uh, purportedly ten quid. I booked mine on the phone. They said, oh, and uh, there's a £2 booking fee. I was like, what? And a 70p uh, posting fee, so it was actually £12.70. Oh, I, was, was I, was, uh, well, I was on the verge of like, hang on a minute. But then I thought, you know what? I don't mind putting money into the club anymore. Under uh, Oi Oysters a lot, I probably would have uh, kicked up a bit of a stink or even said, right, so right, I'll come and pick it up for £2.70. But, yeah, yeah. you know, we've we've saved a lot of money by not going. So I, don't, I really don't mind pumping money into the club. So, yeah, not bothered at all. Right, onto the game itself. Um few changes in the starting lineup. Matt, I can never say this goalie's name. Fumby, is it? Um, Anderton, obviously, replacing uh, James Husband. Bushiri, this the Rocky, the centre-half. Edward Spearing, Hardy, Kai Kai, Feeney, Thompson, Turton and Nanjale. Subs on the bench was Defonso, non- Nottingham, Pritchard and a couple of others, can't remember. Uh, Tim, any... any Surprises in the lineup. I thought it was quite strong, considering yeah. I thought it was going to make wholesale changes. Well, that, that was probably not, that was my immediate thoughts. I think there were seven of the starting lineup from South End started on Tuesday night, and I, I, I perhaps felt there was probably three or more three or more changes on top of that would have been introduced. Do you think he didn't because I think he, he wanted to win the game? He wanted to win the game, or maybe yeah, yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't perhaps fancy some of the other fringe players because I thought one or two of those might. That might have been the chance to start. The Carlisle mid- midfielder, I'm such yeah, and, to see, and uh, Devitt and yeah, Yusuf is it the other guy? Well, I, th- I, I think I've forgotten about him. I think we all expected Nuttall to start, and um, in some respects, that was a little. You bit... You said he was injured, didn't you? He apparently yeah. they got a bit. According to Matt Scrafton, he had a bit of a knock on his Twitter feed. He said so. The him and Tilt, I think Tilt might have started as well. If but for that, so I actually think there was a couple of enforced changes. Where Simon would probably start with maybe up to nine of of the uh, of, of the team from Saturday, and there is there is an argument. It's all, sometimes it's about momentum, isn't it? Mm. But so if it's right that um, not all and Tilt were injured, and obviously he's lost husband anyway, then three of the four changes. Um, <coughs> well, sorry, Nuttall didn't start anyway um, on Saturday, but um, two of the, two of the four changes he made were enforced. So um, and I think it's probably right to give. Keep, have a change of keeper anyway though. so outfield it wasn't it, it was a lot stronger than I was expecting to see really I mean the the game itself pretty much dominated didn't they we were um, we were up 1-0 after what was it 31 minutes uh, great goal from uh, Oiter and glanced header um, fully expected us to go one up and, and we did ash it was a, a, a tidy finish wasn't it yeah it was totally I mean just want to pull one thing back there. Tim mentioned about momentum. Want to keep momentum? I saw momentum. I've seen three games of amazing football with a team that goes forward and wants to go forward. And you compare that to the the the, the tennis old games, one of the six home games, whatever number of away games. And you look at what we started with, sort of, you know, on the opening game of the season and the way they're playing. The momentum's there, and the momentum's there for Saturday. And I can't wait to be there. Yeah. Um, so. W- the game itself, we didn't win the game. Uh, it was a draw. Uh, should have won, really, shouldn't we? I think um, you look back at the chances we had, and it's quite remarkable, that particularly ha- when we saw how clinical we were um, on Saturday, that we didn't put maybe one or two more of those in. Um, I think if we replayed that game ten times, we would win nine of them. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, yeah, we, and, we, and we saw the, we saw the one out of ten that where we don't win. And, you know, we've had a... A rather freak home goal. I don't think um, Rocky could do that again if he tried. 
Um, and then they've looked? scored a wonder goal as well, haven't they? Mm-hmm. How did he look? Because I was away. So not great, sure. to be honest, uh, if I want to be particularly harsh about it. Well, quite, like, quite a clumsy player. I didn't come in here to argue, but as far as I'm concerned, I think the, guy, the guy's going to get his timing. I think he's class. I think he covers the pitch. He's got the enthusiasm. I think once he settles into the plays, he's, uh, he's playing around. I think he'd be great for the club. And uh, well, you know, reiterate what Tim said. It was just a bit of an awkward twist of the body how he managed to do that. And, uh, and I don't. It's certainly he, what he kind of looked nervous to me, to be honest. Because um, he's played sort of under, under twenty one football, hasn't he? I don't. Think he's, mm. Was it actually his league debut in England? Has he ever played for Norwich? And no, well, he sat, they signed no, him in the summer, didn't they? Yeah, he literally signed for them and then be right. sent him out on loan. Yeah. So you can maybe understand him being a bit nervous yeah. because he's probably not, you know, played that much first. When he's come on the sub, though, I've always thought he's looked fairly good and comprehensive and mm. done the running and done what his role was. I, t- I do take your point. Yeah, he d- it was his first start, wasn't it? And okay, it I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, please do. <laughs> uh, give him all the benefit th- of the doubt at the moment. I mean, th- their goal to, to put them 2-1 up um, from a, a sub as well, Virgil Gomez. Uh, mistake by sparing in the middle of the pitch and um, great finish, though, wasn't it? Can't Just, knock that one, can oh, you? Right, yeah, it was a no. worldie, wasn't it? Brilliant. So yeah. they've more or less had two, two chances and stuck them both in. Mm. So it's not what you can do about it. But the, the amount of pressure that we put on... Macclesfield in the last 20 minutes it was just non-stop wasn't it and you, you kind of almost half expected a goal, a goal to come in and uh, it yeah. didn't I think I think the crowd played the part in that as well the I atmosphere think, I think yeah. They, yeah. particularly at the point we went 2-1 down as they were celebrating the goal there was almost you know I know I actually thought it was quite good that only the west and that north um, northwest corner yeah, was really open well that. because mm. it created a great atmosphere for 3,000 you know if we'd all been dotted around the stadium it would have been very difficult to get an atmosphere going but you know, uh, Hoggy, Hoggy was there with his drum, wasn't he? And and the um and everybody played the part up on the up on the balcony. There was there was there was a great atmosphere up there, and and particularly we you know we we I think we we helped the team get that equaliser and um and it's just a pity that we didn't go on from there to win the game. So shall we discuss the penalty shootout? Um, new rules now: ninety minutes if it's draw, it's penalty well, shootout. Can I just say it wasn't the penalty that got us back in the game? Oh yes, actually, <laughs> yeah, we were laughing about that, weren't we? Uh, <laughs> Nandjale back to goal, going away from goal. Um, I think he was he was clever though, wasn't he? The way he did it, he was he was stood kind of shielding the ball, waiting for someone to do mm. any contact, wasn't he? And he went down like the proverbial sack of studs. <laughs> I remember thinking, yeah. nah, it's not a pen. But I, I think the referee was swayed by the the, the, by the kind crowd, of the separate the crowd. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we were the twelfth man, after all. We were. Um, Nanjai got up, took the penalty, and stuck it away. And we could have won it. There was five minutes of extra time as well, wasn't there? I, so I thought I thought we had the momentum at that point. Yeah, I did. I thought we were going to wrap Didn't it up. Didn't we have one last chance right at the end? Um, I think it went, we did it, go, it went over the bar, didn't it, if I remember rightly? Um, did we not hit it? Did we not have a shot from the edge of the area and it went about yeah. two or three I yards mean, over the bar? There's just too many chances to remember that we did. We did a lot. Of, one minor gripe might be we could have been a bit more clinical in the game, perhaps. I think there was a def- there was a header wasn't there, that went wide uh, in the second half and it was must have been easy to hit the target and it's you c- you can just see that uh, you know that that we're not looking quite as clinical in front of goal but you're going to get games like that you know you're not going to be able to if you bag every chance that you get every game you'd be playing in the Premiership wouldn't you so mm. um, I think the important thing as well is that it sounds like the perf- you know the performance is there yeah. You know, and that's all you can ask for. With, like with half of your first team missing. Yeah, you're going to get games where it doesn't hit the back of the net. Um, but if they're playing well and creating chances, that's as much as you can ask for, I think. I don't think anybody have left there on Tuesday night having been disappointed mm. with what they saw. Um, and I think, it, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes it just does not happen for you. Yeah. And it clearly didn't for us on Tuesday night. But, you know, we were, I left there thinking I really enjoyed that. I'm glad I went. Um, not di- not too disappointed. Mm. Which is very strange for a first round Carabao Cup game. Mm. Um, everyone was looking forward to it, wasn't they? Weren't they? Absolutely, and everybody went home and having enjoyed yeah, it, yeah. even though we lost. Um, so we have a quick to talk about the penalty shootout. Um, they missed to, to kick off with, didn't they? The first penalty at the bar. Uh, our penalties weren't great, though, uh, apart from. Who scored off first? I've got a little list here. I'm worried about Kai Kai at the moment because he's so desperate to score and he is so he is by far, as everybody is saying, he looks the biggest piece of quality we've got on the pitch. Mm. I just hope yeah, that I this desperation that seems to be within him 
is giving enough to a team performance as it is and what he's done in the two league games that's made the difference for Blackpool. He doesn't have to score. His assists are amazing. His speed up front superb. And the goals will come. But I think, I saw when I took that penalty, it just sort of made me think. think we all knew, didn't we, he was going to yeah, miss. Because he's so desperate yeah. to score. For Blackpool Football Club. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Right, um, man of the match was uh, Feeney. Would you agree with that, Tim? Uh, yeah, I thought he had, a, he, had a, he had a very solid game on the on the right hand side. Um, I'm just trying to think who I would have, I would have gone man of the match for if any if any different from that. I think I, I think he was probably the most consistent player. If you look look mm. around what we did and 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 who who excelled themselves, he got plenty of the ball across from the right, didn't he? And um, he, he, I, I always I went I saw him at Accrington away last year and I thought he played really really well there. And then I was always I always felt a little bit disappointed with his performances after that. I felt he had more to give and he never gave it. And he, along with Fonz and a couple of others from the last year's team, I think have really stepped up the game this year. And uh, it's good to see. Mm, it certainly is. I mean, it's a very obvious one to say, but I do think Jay Spearing had his normal... Yeah, super, very, tidy, busy, very tidy, very wasn't tidy he? performance. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but it's nice to give it to somebody like Feeney because I think that will drive him on and spur him on. So for giving it to him, I, I think it's great. Right, yep. Right, well, those last two, two matches review. Let's take a bit of a break now. Um, we'll move on to Tangerine Topics. <laughs> Tangerine <laughs> Topics. Um, there's actually not a lot of news, which is quite unusual for Blackpool this uh, this <coughs> past week. Normally, there's also almost too much to talk about, so... We'll quickly, quickly fire through these. Um, the transfer rumour, we've been linked with Adam Hamill. I'm sure we all remember him. <coughs> Who wants to come in on this? Do you fancy him, yay or nay, Nick? Um, not really sure. Um, he's only 31. Is I was going to say how old he is, because it seems like he's been around for a long time. Um, I think he's one of those... Well, you look at the number of clubs he's had as well. I think he can kind of start off really well. Um, very skillful player. Uh, scores some good goals, but... There's obviously something there that he's never really seemed to have settled where he's been at for very long, which makes you wonder: is that well? It's probably consistency uh, is that the that is the thing that's missing. And I think Larry's probably thinking now. I think anybody we need to sign because it, it, I don't think he's too impressed with one or two of the signings who we got before he came along. Um, and I think anybody we need to sign now, we don't need squad players. We need players who can affect the first team. So. Unless he's going to be one of those, I don't think we should be doing it. Um, and he's another winger. Do we really? Do we really need? Another yeah, winger? yeah. I'm not. I'm not so sure. It, really, it could be a squad, but a good addition to the squad. It but could will they affect the first team. Yeah, and that's what I think we need. I think we need somebody who's going to, you know, potentially come straight in. And you know, we talked about on the previous show about getting a really creative midfielder yeah. in. Mm. I would rather see that position filled than perhaps a bench warmer. I think Nick's nailed it for me. Mm. I couldn't agree with that more. Did yeah, you it, see was, it was Larry that signed him first time yeah, round. I was just thinking back to that. I was, trying yeah, to, trying yeah. to, I was just thinking that they're trying to mull over when he actually played for us. But I think he was only about 19, wasn't he? And we did we get him on loan from Liverpool at the time? That's right. And we did, uh, yeah. So he was, was a young lad. And um, I think it was back in Grayson's day. So probably Grayson... 2006, no, I think it was. Yeah, it was back in so 2006. We should tie in with him being 18 and 19 mm-hmm. at the time. I remember he scored the opening goal against Preston. Then we lost 3-1 and we were at home. Yeah, that's right. He did, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. quite disappointed we didn't try and sign him at the time, if I remember. But um, in that kind of era, we never signed good loan players that mm. we've had, did we? Yeah, I think we know why, and I think we can move <laughs> on again <laughs> <laughs> under that wretched ownership. But Tim, you were saying um, we'd also Simon Sadler. <laughs> <laughs> we've been linked possibly with Hennigan as well, yeah, which I think would be somebody I would want back. Yeah, there was a report. Um, I think it was in one of the Sheffield papers because the. The Sheffield uh, United manager apparently is a bit disappointed that certain players, and Hennigan was one of the ones that was mentioned, hadn't found themselves a new club because with them being in the Premiership, uh, the perception is that they're not going to play. And it's uh, Premier League, Tim. It's no longer called the Premiership. It was only right. a Premiership for like one or two years. Apologies. I did um, think when I was listening back to this, I must pull Tim up on this. <laughs> and you got your chance. <laughs> feel better now yeah. it's like a rerun yeah, yeah. of the life of Brian isn't it <laughs> are you the people's liberation front of Rome no we're the Roman liberation front <laughs> it's because it's because I kept pulling him up about yes. Anik last week yeah. <laughs> G- Ganangelé or whatever yeah. it is that you said so uh, <laughs> but it, you know I, I, it looked that it was the, it was a Sheffield based article and it mentioned that Blackpool um, he might be linked we're going back to Blackpool and I think 
probably based on comments that he made towards the end of last season. Mm. But again, with Bowler, he he picked up the manager, Matt, uh, you know, the, um, the play of the season awards between the two of them. He scored at the weekend uh, last game. Did I noticed, he? yeah, he scored for Middlesbrough. Um, the <laughs> we were just talking off air about uh, Hennigan. I can't even remember what he looks like or what position he played because uh, you know last 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 few games last season you don't really know the player. So what position did he play? Centre half. Was he good? Uh, very solid. I mean, th- the fact that he picked up the awards along with Bowler shows the level of consistency I think that he had last year. I suppose the question for us is, you know, do we do think we need, we need a fourth? Do we need a fourth centre half? Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Probably on very good wages as well. Yeah, well, this is possible. We were discussing this, weren't we? Possibly one of the reasons why he's not moved on is if if he's got one of those contracts that increases your wages when you your team moves up into the Premiership. You'd stick around, wouldn't Premier you? Premier League, even. Uh, then Bar- <laughs> in the Barclays <laughs> Premier League, you mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then, uh, then that might that might be um, uh, something against mm. um, moving on because, of course, it might actually be better for you to go out on loan and, and keep the wage that you've you've yeah. you've. you've Succeeded in getting as being part of that promotion winning squad, albeit when you're out on loan. Did anyone see today um, that Bolton player? Um, they've got a Turkish player as a mm. quite a creative playmaker. He's been he's been released today, so could be a sort of player that'll get the pulses racing in the uh, central midfield. I think there'll be quite a few clubs in for him. He's terminated his contract, hasn't he? Um, what yeah. a shame! All <coughs> these things that's happening at Bolton. Mm. Eh? Let's hope they don't get sorted out for October. <laughs> Are they on a 12-point deduction as well? Yeah, they're on the 12-point. Yeah. They lost the first game. Yeah. They, they drew the, they they drew the second one, didn't they? They drew with Coventry, I think it yeah. was, wasn't it? Nil-nil. Yeah, I mean, we joke about it and with Bury as well, but you kind of need that rivalry, don't you? It's not what you want. We don't want no, to rivalry. No, no, we joke about it, it, but no, it's 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 not the fans' fault, is it? Um, Bury, yeah. those knobheads aside with that banner, you don't want to see Bury going out of business. Well, it's a decent away we're, day. We're over it, though. Like. We're, over, we're over stuff like that, aren't we? And it's like... Whatever did go on outside the ground after Macclesfield, if they shout it, it's gone. It doesn't matter. We, we've risen above it. We've got Simon Sadler. And because of having fans saying that more on in, um, we've moved on so quick and so high. We wouldn't be at this high now if we're not being that, at that low. And we've just risen up. We could just look around at everybody and just say, we're Tangerine and we're Supreme. We've got Simon Sadler. If you want to make a fool of yourself and go on about the past, look where we've got because of that past. And it's it's all going one way north. Everything at Blackburn Football Club is going north. It's like a it's like a rerun this of his six oh six performance <laughs> last Saturday night. It's like how much how much positivity can one man give out? <laughs> For Tim, Blackpool Football Club. Tim Tim, you've you've seen me at the in Tory Corner many a time completely really believing that I was never ever gonna go I, for the Actually I remember seeing you in the um thatched when we played uh who was it in the playoff final? Lu- Luton oh the no the uh, the, the Exeter. Exeter, Exeter yeah when when we scored and the Luton game I think you were in there yeah, as yeah. well weren't yeah. you? Yeah I remember I, cu- I couldn't help myself on the Luton when we scored that uh, that winner and and I was like yes and I saw you you were just rolling your eyes and same for the the, uh, the 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 player final as well. So because to come from that dark place, it's such a it was a dark place. Yeah. It was an awful day that that extra final. Right or wrong, in, you know, it did take us up in the division. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. And actually, I think probably my, my thought process was wrong that day. But I believe that what we were trying to do and trying to achieve it was just going to put us three years back. And the thought mm. of not seeing my beloved Blackpool, and also, more importantly, getting the the, 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 ta- the the team back for the community of Blackpool, rather than 1,400 people watching watching it, and as opposed to the nearly 10 times that now. Um, what I see now, it just makes me so refreshed, and I've got to say, that there's just I've got nothing to moan about. I don't want to moan about anything. I'm just so glad to be so positive, and I'm not just saying this as if I want to be a marketing idiot for Blackpool Football Club. I don't, they don't need my marketing. They're doing it themselves. Um, I'm just enjoying the trip. And to me, um, this is the best ride I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Go with the seafarers. <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, seriously, t- to me, I'm actually enjoying this more than being in the Premiership season. And the reason being is the Premiership came money and I thought that was going to guarantee the club's future. Yeah. It didn't. It's a, all right, it was a false dawn. But I actually believe there's no false dawn now. I believe what's happening this season... And what's happened with the change of ownership, whether we get promoted or not this year, this is 
a journey, and it's a journey we're going on, and it's only going to go away. And I hate to keep using the saying, I'll, I'll, I won't say it one more time, but we're only going to go north. And, and, and the, the, the whole club and everything, what's happened, the way it's all been put together, the, the, it's the incremental side and the sense, the, the, sen the sense of sensibility of it all that I just have to sit back and admire. And, you know, I hate to crawl to him, but Tim was a, Tim was a, a big part of actually bringing it, the, the fact that we, we, we got to the point we did in getting the club into, in, 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 into um, calling in the voluntary receivers at the, uh, uh, at the courts, as many more were. But, you know, the, the, the magic word that the interim board did in actually preparing f until they'd done the process and the time. We're talking the sixth of bloody... You're not swearing it. The, the, of course you fucking are. The, 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 the sixth of February. And you know, for God's sake, you know, we're midway through August and look at it. I'll shut up now. I'm not on speed tonight, honest. It, it, it is <laughs> a very different club, isn't it? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, so, speaking of the, the best ride we've ever been on, I hope you hope... You know, you speak of going north. I hope your club, co your uh, coach, doesn't go north because it's more down south, isn't it, towards Rochdale? Um, <laughs> well, nicely segueing on. Uh, I think that gag, gag was lost there a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, south, south and east a bit. We're going to Rochdale away next game. Uh, Ashley, you are running a uh, coach, aren't you? Would yeah. you like to give us um, the fan base a bit more? I say the fan base, the uh, the list, the Sea Sounds podcast listener base, a bit more details about. The um the coach travel that you're going to be running um and going this the service going forward a bit more details. Well again it's a bit like um when I was making placards when it when it was there were negative times I'm trying to do something positive. Um, I think while the team's doing doing well, if I can offer some North Fylde, obviously it's Polton Fylde Seasiders. Um, I have run coaches before. Um, Hence your name Polton Bus on the forums. That's correct. Yeah, uh, although a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, they do now. Um, you are, yeah. Um, <laughs> Rochdale really has sold out like hot cakes. I've had to put it together very, very quickly. Um, there was I, some I breaking news today, though. There's no booze allowed, is there? So uh, me and Nick are handing in our tickets at the end of the show. Well, you, I'm only joking. You, you all have the, you the option. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, basically, we've got to comply with the law. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the, what yeah. we've got to bear in mind is the idea of, uh, 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 of Polton Seaside is, is along the lines of what it was. A lot of people know each other and everybody will know each other. We'll know the driver of the coach. It's a club all intended to have a good day what, out. Was there a little kind of Polton Seaside's community? Because I've, I've only been here for three years because I used to live in South Shore. Is that, what, was that a thing in the past? Yeah, very much so. I mean, there's the FY6 Seasiders that uh, opened, I mean, called his name uh, Malcolm Andrew and, 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 crew, and crew, and we all used to go and watch England. Oh, there was right, like okay. 12 of us, and then they Were came you in this little coach. gang, Tim? No, uh, I'm, I'm very much on the outside, <laughs> looking in, looking through the dirty window. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> That's the window coming up. I'm sure but you'll uh, be allowed it now, though, Tim. Uh, there's, 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 nothing there's, like there's, there's nothing clique about Polton Seaside, <laughs> rest assured. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the town and, uh, and it was centred around the pub. Uh, in all fairness, it was Neil when he was the landlord at the, at the Bull. He used to leave bacon sandwiches on and we could put, put the coach out there and he was fantastic. So I was able to offer a different type of day out experience. I, I don't want to actually um, be up the crack of dawn and travel dead early to go to a game. And when it's an hour away, if I can have a couple of beers in Polton and jump on a coach for an hour, have a have a three quarters of an hour on the concourse, and then come straight back and be back in Polton, well, that that's what I would like. Now, that's not what a lot of people want on a football trip. They want a full day out. Mm. I think there is maybe, um, well, past history has proven that, that, that certainly an hour away. What I am doing this time, though, is now I've announced today that I'm running one to Birmingham. I think it's a bit of trial and error. I'm not sure it's going to work. I'll be quite straight. Um, try my best. I'm going to try my best to fill it. But I've decided I'm going to commit to running it. Um, That's for the Coventry game. Birmingham. I was about to say. Coventry. Yeah, they play there, don't they? Play at Birmingham. Yeah, Do they really? Yeah, they're playing Yeah, <laughs> on, on the 7th of September. So we've released that today. Um, and the fact is, if, um, if it falls short, it falls short. I won't do that distance again. However... I'm going to put my own money up, and what I'm saying tonight is I guarantee that coach will run. Oh, good on you. Even if it's only me on it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some fantastic entertainment. You can put the Seasiders podcast line, uh, stream it through the, uh, the audio system, keep the punters entertained for we, we did 90 that minutes. The, we did that on the way down to South Bend. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, why I've come tonight. It, <laughs> it, make, it makes the, uh, the time fly by, doesn't it? Yeah, no, so in conclusion, <laughs> we're using G-line coaches, which are a, a, yep. very, a very high level of, of coach. Um, 
I want comfort. I want quick coaches that get in and out. I mean, Rochdale's quite difficult to get to on the train, isn't it? It's a bit of a kind of a bore ache of a journey. So, yep. yeah. Um, yeah, me and Nick are going down, aren't we, Nick? So, yeah, I'm looking forward indeed. to it. Get a, Sneak some cams on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. Central <laughs> um, Birmingham's not... I mean, you'll find a coat with some uh, spirits in. <laughs> I've not heard this. I've just taken. I've just taken my headphones out. I've not heard it. <laughs> Moving on, I think. Right. Yep. Yeah, let's move on. Um, on the coach tip, uh, the club's now running coaches officially. And not really uh, groundbreaking news. Okay, well, again, it's, no, it's, it's another positive, yeah, isn't yeah. it, for people? Absolutely. Who want Abs- that sort of thing. Mm. But official club coaches. Yeah, I think they're at the ticket, the trialling it, taking one to Rochdale. Again, it, it's about what people want. I mean, you know, the BS, BSA take their coaches, they go for the very early start, get there very early, and, and like I say, make everybody make a full day of it. But the, it's about as long as there's the demand, um, we'll, um, you know, the fact that we've got all these different options is, is, is good to see. It shows again that inter- there's interest in Blackpool Football Club and. And, you know, uh, let's get as many people. I'm sure there'd be plenty going to Rochdale. I would have thought I'd be surprised if we don't take 1,500, 2,000, to be honest. So uh, I th- I'm sure that all these coaches will be full. I mean, I, I like the idea of staying in the thatch, personally. It's a it's a good idea. You can have a few in there, can't you? Well, it just keeps the money in there. Uh, just need to make sure that the toilet's functioning properly on the coach, because I can imagine uh, there'll be a, a long queue on the... Uh, well, that's the reason, to be honest, Tim, why on the two-hour trip, I'm, st- I'm having a, a service station break to take that to take that sort of demand off it, you know, and it's leaving early, so there's probably going to be actually the consumption is going to be had at the other end <laughs> when we get to the ground. Leaving at half ten. I mean, I know I'm renowned for liking a drink or two, but I won't be drinking at half eight and be on the bus. I'll, I'll wait till I get there, but I'll sink a few once I get there. <laughs> yeah, half eight's a bit too early, isn't it? More of a quarter to nine kind of guy. I'm <laughs> <Yeah. of mine>. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, well, there's a bit of sad news um, in the week. Uh, yeah. Uh, the former groundsman Gary Lewis um, sadly passed away uh, at the weekend. He wasn't here for long, but um, you know it's it's not great, is it? It's uh, quite. A I, d- I mean, I got to know him reasonably well because uh, when uh, we came in on the interim board, obviously Gary was the, the groundsman in situ, mm. and uh, I've, I've always had quite fond memories. Because if you remember the South End game, it chucked it down in the week leading up to it. And it was actually there's a bit of a whether it's going to be on a bit of a concern as to whether because of that north um, so the southeast no southwest corner was particularly bad and uh, he stayed up uh, all night and he had his I think his sleeping bag uh, by the pitch and basically when it rained he was putting the covers on as soon as it stopped raining Did he was he really? taking them off again yeah he stayed all night he said I'm, I mean I've never lost a game yet and I don't intend to lose wow. this one That's but cool. I was actually genuinely worried that the game was going to be called off which had been so disappointed. Disappointing after selling so many tickets in such a short space of time. Good so, on him, um, oh, wow. That's you know, without, dedication without that dedication, course, the yeah, match may not have taken place. Yeah, yeah. Let's face it, the way that weather turned, um, even though I was in Cambodia at the time, we, we were reading about the danger of the, gra- the, the game not being on, and for that not to have happened for the town, it mm. would have been absolutely tragic. And mm. just a shame he's, you know, let him rest in peace. It's just a shame he's not here to, yeah. to enjoy these good times that are coming so, as well. Yeah. But, uh, obviously, at the moment, I think. Our thoughts go to his family as well. Absolutely, it's so close yeah. as well, isn't it? When these sad things happen, I yeah. think. I think uh, there was. I know there's been mention on Twitter today that on, uh, on the uh, the Muckers feed that they're, they're going to have a minute's applause for him on the 63rd minute, which um, is, is how old he was when he died. Which is 63. Not, 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 yeah. not an age at all, that is it? <laughs> right. Um, just finally, on a slightly more positive note, um, the club has re-entered the Central League for the reserve fixtures next season. Um, home games, I believe, Tim, to be played at Squaresgate FC. Um, do you know the, the kind of thinking and logic behind this move? I don't. I mean, I've been working on the uh, training ground provision at Squaresgate as one of like my little projects I've been on. And uh, originally, when uh, Terry had um, mentioned about playing in the Central League, and we were going to play the games at um, Squaresgate, the training ground. And so, obviously, what we're, what we're working on down there was going to make sure that we had the facilities to do that. Um, but uh, I, I learned um, after Simon came in that they had a second thoughts about that. Um, I was made aware that of the Squaresgate FC link-up um, just before we played them in the youth game. I think that was probably linked to the discussions that had taken place. And uh, I think it's probably the right thing. I think it's good. You know, there might be some bit of money going through the gates of, at Squaresgate FC. Uh, they've obviously got some facilities down there. If there's an interest for people going down to, um, you know, to is it, is supply it free refreshments. Season, is it free for season ticket? I don't actually know, to be honest. I'll be honest, I don't know. But 
I used to quite enjoy going to reserve games. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, you might, you might, particularly depending on when they are. I know we've got the list of when they are. Um, you know, we're going to be playing Fleetwood and Huddersfield and Carlisle and teams like that. And there's not a lot of them, but there's probably 15 games. And um, I think it's an opportunity to see some of the fringe players. And like you say, if you've got somewhere they've actually got refreshment facilities in a bar rather than going down and watching at the training ground. Mm. If you've got nothing better to do, you can get yourself down there, can't yeah, you? It's, um, it's, you know, it's another opportunity, isn't it, just to link up with a community a community focused football club and hopefully help them out as well as, you know, don't put pressure on our home pitch and don't use you know, don't go somewhere where we haven't actually got the facilities to cater any, uh, cater if anybody wants to watch it. So a, a, a Nick another good example of the, the club reconnecting with the community. Absolutely. And long may it continue it. It's you know, it's another incremental change in a positive step. It's like every day there's something else happening. Yeah. And and and, and so much of it's community based and it's it, it's just refreshing and brilliant to see. Right, so uh, we've just got one more section to cover off. Um, that's the upcoming fixtures, tiny bit break, and then we'll uh, wrap things up. <laughs> right, so we've got Oxford United on uh, Saturday, the 17th of August. This Saturday coming, so it's two days away. I think we could probably be all, all in agreement this is going to be our toughest test so far I would say so I think they've had the good result at Sunderland yeah good result up at Sunderland beat Peterborough yeah. and then beat them again exactly and that's two of the teams who are you know certainly Sunderland I think Peterborough are reasonable, sh- reasonably short odds there they were up there at the start of the season with as one of the bookies favourites so uh, yeah I think it's going to be a, a tough test definitely Right, we have got a uh, an interview with um, the Fence End podcast where Liam Wakeford kindly uh, spoke to us. Martin Corner, our kind of uh, our new reporter out there in the field, he did a really good interview with Liam. Um, he, this is their views from the Oxford podcast, the Fence End. Right there, thanks a lot, Liam, for doing that interview. Um, good stuff. Uh, quite informative. Very much so. I mean, obviously, they're quite confident of the results they've had, and I don't blame them. They got a great result at, at, at Sunderland. Um, when you've not seen a team play, it's very difficult. You know, you can talk a result, you don't know actually how they got that result. But obviously, you know, the the the, the four points are there. I know how our teams play the last the first two league games, and they're going to have to be very very good if they're going to have any chance of beating Blackpool because Blackpool. At the moment, with the, t- the set of players we've got and the the discipline that Simon Grayson's given them, I think we'll start the match confidently, especially after the performance even the other night. Um, we're at home. We'll have a big support, and I expect to have a big support. We're very disappointed if we don't have... More than likely to be five figures again, I would have thought. At least. I'd like to think. At least, at least. Um, and the, uh, I'm sure that the fans will give the atmosphere that they gave the other night, and there's only 3,700 there. Um, and I... I think it, it will be, I do agree, it's going to be the biggest test so far. It's going to be the toughest game. But if Blackpool just settle down and start playing the way they've done and work the way through with the formation and discipline, um, I think you'd be a brave bet uh, against Blackpool winning on Saturday. So what's your prediction, Ash? 2-0 to Blackpool. Nicholas? I'll go 2-1 to Blackpool. 2-1 was what I was thinking as well, Tim. <coughs> Were you going to temper I, things a little? I you, think possibly? so. I, I'm I'm slightly concerned that Jay Speary might miss the game. He went off injured, didn't mm. he? Was Kil- Tilt carrying a bit of a knock as well? Yeah, and obviously, Tilt. we're missing husband as well. Anderton didn't look as good as husband, did he? Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm going to go for a one-all draw. Yeah, I've, I'm going with my uh, a guy I work with as well. He's an Oxford fan, so he's coming over. So I'm quite looking forward to it. So we're going to have a few beers and. Uh, I'll, s- yeah, I'll, I'll advise mine to one all as well, so in case we get beat, he can't get me on Monday morning. So. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a tough game, but hopefully we'll prevail. We have got a, uh, finally, we've got another game on Tuesday away at Gillingham. Mm, no, a bit of a slog for everyone. We're that. going down now, should we? Tw- <laughs> 10 hours in the car again? Well, no, I, I did actually see if I could get a work appointment. My lad's going, he, li- he lives in London, and... Um, TG71, a quite well-known poster. He's down there working. And that's when you get jealous of all the Basel lot, really. Mm. They're there and they can go on a, on a midweek game. I'd like to be there, but that is just a step too far. Mm. I once went to Gillingham away on a coach when I was about 14. Went oh, all the way there. 
Did you? Lost 3-2. Were you there? I was were there. Were you really? Were I you was really? There. Peter Beadles. 1992. 1992. 1992 it was. David Ayer scored an absolute Correct. screamer. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Harvey Lim, the goalie. I still remember his name. The ponytail yeah. goalie wrestling yeah. with Andy Garner. That's yeah. right. I remember. But we went up that year on penalties to Scunthorpe at the end of the day. All, all was well ended well. Yeah, it was a really hot day, wasn't it? it I remember was the really old Priest Field yeah. Stadium. I didn't know you were there, did yeah. And I can, I can remember being in the well, pub next to the mate. ground and the, the late, great Graham Berry coming in in his shorts. in Those, <laughs> those uh, Bermuda shorts. Those yeah. Bermuda shorts. <laughs> and, and we were talking to these Gilligan fans and all right. And he comes in as bold as brass and they're all looking, you know, what the hell's coming here? Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Graham, shaking his hand. <laughs> was he doing his uh, terracotta lizard impression? He, <laughs> he certainly was. Lizard, lizard, <laughs> lizard. <laughs> oh, what a character. And he that's, was. that's what the club's made of, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just a shame he's not around to see what we've got now, isn't yeah, it? Really? Yeah. So right, okay. So I think we'll uh I'll just press my little button there. Where's it gone? Intro, there it is. So yeah, um we're gonna wrap things up now. Um finally I'm just gonna say, um, listeners, if you are listening to this via Apple podcast, please do leave us a re- leave us a review in there. So we obviously we went off air, we got taken off iTunes so we're kind of resetting again so if you can leave us a review in there it'll greatly help the reach of the show um, we are getting a lot more listeners and downloads coming now we're approaching the 400 per episode so it'd be great to get that back so if you do have two minutes please do leave us a review another another mammoth podcast an hour and five an hour and ten even right so uh, thanks Nick pleasure as always thanks, Tim thank you thanks Ash it's really good to have you on board pleasure thanks for inviting me to be said it's thanks for downloading thanks for listening and up the pool oh, 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 come on boys up, up the pool